Imagine a civilization so advanced that its sailors rode the monsoon winds across oceans, its scientists spoke of gravity a thousand years before Newton, and its doctors performed plastic surgery 2,000 years ago. A civilization that developed atomic theory long before modern science and wrote epics so grand that even Shakespeare was inspired by them. Now imagine that this civilization never claimed credit for any of it. Welcome to the forgotten genius of India, a land that mastered knowledge but never sought to advertise it. Before Columbus, before Magellan, before Vasco da Gama, Indian sailors ruled the seas. But they never wrote grand tales of discovery, because to them, the world was already connected. Indian ports like Muziris, Arikamadu, and Barigaza thrived through Indo-Roman trade, with Roman ships sailing annually to India as early as Emperor Augustus's time. Pliny the Elder complained that Rome was spending 100 million sesterces a year on Indian luxuries. Indian sailors used monsoon winds for navigation long before the Greek mariner Hippolys was credited with discovering them. Innovations like the Matsya Yantra, a crude compass, and Plava, mass stabilizers, enabled long-distance trade. While Europeans celebrated their age of discovery, Indians had already mapped these routes for centuries, silently, without fanfare. Isaac Newton discovered gravity, right? But what if an Indian mathematician had already written about it 500 years earlier? Bhaskara II, 1150 CE, wrote that objects fall to earth due to a force of attraction. Canada, 6th century BCE, spoke of atoms, paramanu, as indivisible building blocks of matter, predating John Dalton's atomic theory by over 2,000 years. Madhava of Sangamagrama, 14th century, pioneered infinite series and early calculus centuries before Newton and Leibniz. Aryabhata, 5th century CE, proposed Earth's rotation, the reflection of sunlight by the moon, and scientifically explained eclipses, 1,000 years before Copernicus and Galileo. Yet modern science books seldom mention these Indian minds. Why? Because they didn't claim these discoveries as their own. They shared them freely. Plastic surgery, cataract removal, cesarean sections, all of these were performed in India over 2,000 years ago. Sushruta, 600 BCE, performed advanced surgeries, detailing over 300 procedures and 120 instruments in the Sushruta Samhita. His rhinoplasty technique, forehead flap surgery, is the earliest recorded nose reconstruction in history, only rediscovered in Europe in the 18th century. Charaka's Ayurveda, 200 BCE, laid the foundation of internal medicine, emphasizing a holistic approach to health. While the West was still treating diseases with superstition, Indian doctors were already advancing medical science. But did they patent their discoveries? No, they believed in Vidya Dan, the sharing of knowledge as a duty to society. The world calls Shakespeare a literary genius, but did you know that German poet Goethe was inspired by an Indian play written over a thousand years earlier? Kalidasa, 5th century CE, wrote Abhijñana Shakuntala, which mesmerized European scholars when translated in the 18th century. The Mahabharata, 4th century BCE, is the longest epic in the world, dwarfing the Iliad and Odyssey combined. Panchatantra, 3rd century BCE, a book of animal fables, influenced Aesop's fables, the Arabian Nights, and La Fontaine's fables. But India never needed to prove its literary brilliance. Its stories simply traveled, shaping global folklore without seeking recognition. Before Socrates, before Aristotle, before the Renaissance, India had already mastered the art of reason and debate. Nyaya philosophy, 2nd century BCE, developed a five-step logical reasoning system, similar to modern logic. Panini's Astadhyay, 5th century BCE, laid out 4,000 grammar rules, forming the world's first computational linguistic system, comparable to modern programming languages. Taxashila, Taxila, and Nalanda universities, 5th century BCE onward, attracted students from across Asia, centuries before Europe's first universities. India didn't just produce scholars, it produced systems of knowledge that others later discovered under different names. So why isn't all this common knowledge? Because India never saw knowledge as a tool for personal fame. 
Indian culture valued knowledge as a collective inheritance, passed down without obsession over individual credit. Unlike the West, where patents and written records secured recognition, India's oral traditions ensured knowledge was used, not just remembered. Colonization and Eurocentric historical narratives further erased India's scientific, literary, and philosophical achievements from mainstream discourse. But now, it's time to reclaim our legacy. India's knowledge shaped the world, whether history books acknowledge it or not.